It goes without saying that humans are different from the rest of the animal kingdom. Our assortment of unique traits allowing us to stand bipedally as the dominant life form on this planet. But there is one odd trait that we have no good evolutionary explanation for, our longevity, living long after passing on our genes. For many years, this was explained away by the grandmother hypothesis, that the grandparents would assist in raising the grandchildren, in form of kin selection. However, this has a plethora of issues, not the least of which that it assumes a very early leap in social development. Now, what if we don't assume that slightly encephalized chimps were capable of making babysitting arrangements? <laughs> Let me draw your attention to three common signs of aging. Graying hair, old person smell, and wrinkles. <laughs> now, what if we look at these not as symptoms of aging, but rather as the justification for it? To this end, let me introduce you to Ictonic striatus, the striped polecat. <laughs> also known as the African skunk, its odor, like that of the North American skunk, is used to repel predators. Our proposal is that selective pressures drove humans to mimic the striped polecat post-reproduction, to turn into smelly sentinels as we age. <laughs> there is a gross amount of evidence for this. The vast majority of early hominid archaeological sites have been found within the range of the striped polecat, esta <laughs> establishing our proximity. These same archaeological sites have shown that we shared predators and that we fared poorly, inferior to the striped polecat in the field of not being eaten. <laughs> now, let's take a look at what traits we've taken from the noble African skunk. Notice the facial mask <laughs> and its similarity to the typical human graying pattern starting in the temples. Zoologists believe that the purpose of this mask is to help warn off predators. Now, in humans, this alone would likely only serve to give pause to predators before maiming us. However, this leads me to the most important piece of evidence. This is 2 nonanol. It is secreted from the pores of people, along with lipid peroxide, after around the age of 40 and has been identified as the cause of old person smell. Now, th the name itself might not tell you very much, but it has been classified as an irritant by the NFPA. And 2-octanol and 2-decanol, both one carbon removed, are secreted by the green stink bug. <laughs> yes, there is precedent for this chemical being used as a predatory deterrent. Wrinkling would serve to help increase skin surface area and to assist in clinging to this substance, <laughs> making the individual perpetually scented. The evidence points to a model in which these individuals, these smelly sentinels, repelled predators from attacking their groups, <laughs> increasing kin survival, and increasing genetic fitness. The uh, smell may have also assisted in encouraging the offspring to become independent more rapidly, but <laughs> researching that is ongoing. I don't want anything without, you know, real data behind it. Um, interestingly, though, two nonanol production, graying and wrinkling, have all been found to be associated with peroxides, which increase with both age and stress, showing that the expression of these three traits are biologically set to occur at the same time. Now, there may be some questions as to why this all happens post-reproduction. Surely, predator repulsion is a favorable trait. This involves many, many different regulatory mechanisms, most of which are boring, but uh, <laughs> but I will briefly touch upon the stress and sexual feedback mechanisms. The smell would decrease attractiveness to mates, reducing future offspring, but the earlier one develops these traits, the higher the survival rate of existing offspring, optimizing onset immediately after the birth of the last child. On the other hand, stress has been shown to increase peroxide production and would serve to speed up onset in a group chronically beset by predators. Now, <laughs> despite our stringent adherence to the scientific method, we have elected not to try for field observation of this particular phenomenon. <laughs> However, it has been boldly proposed by some revolutionary members of the scientific community that maybe children cause stress. Oh leading to increased peroxide production and an earlier onset in individuals with more offspring to protect. These would all drive expression to occur immediately after birth of the last child. 
as you can clearly see, archaeology, biology, chemistry, sociology, and simple common sense all point to the fact that we owe our long and fruitful lifespans to the striped polecat. And as you can clearly see, aging is not the slow breakdown of the body, but rather a final act of love and sacrifice for one's family. I ask of you only this, that you no longer associate the smell of your grandparents with hard candy and mothballs, but rather associate it with the distinct lack of predators maiming you.